several years ago now, my friend uh, Sally Duclo came in my office. I know she's going, what are you saying? To be careful. And uh, she said, Pastor, can I, can I ask you a question? When you pray and you say, and all God's people said, Amen, just before you do that, could you make sure you say it in Jesus' name? And I said, that's a really good point. Yes, absolutely. And because we, we do pray in the name of Jesus. It isn't, uh, Jesus isn't here with us physically, but all that he has done and all that he is doing and promised to do, we pray in the name of Jesus. Just his name. Just his name is uh, a powerful um, opportunity we have to uh, express to the world and to the, uh, to the enemy uh, and the people around us who Jesus is and what he has done and is doing and going to do. So I don't know how many people know, and they're going to probably shoot me for this, but um, my friends over here, the Lukes, uh, I don't know if you know Mac and Leanne, uh, and they're going, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? But they had something crazy interesting happen in their life this last week, and I'm excited to have them here with us this morning. Uh, do you guys, do you mind standing just for a second? Um, so, Mac and Leanne, we've known, we've known Leanne a little bit through uh, New Covenant before we came here, um, but uh, they've started attending. They live a little bit of a distance away from us, and um, but this is how committed they are. So, so what happened this last week in your life, in your lives together? Um, well, we, we were pregnant, and now we had a little episode of preeclampsia, and baby is in NICU. Wow. And his name? Augustus. Augustus has been born to the Luke family, and we celebrate that with you this morning. And I have come alongside of them and said, hey, so as a church, we want to respond to this, this new life and this new family that has uh, just started out with us, and uh, we want to partner with you guys. And... Uh, I have, um, <clears throat> I know that they said, hey, let us get settled in a little bit, because your due date was... March 13th. Right? <laughs> so we are like, wow, okay. Yeah, that's, that's been a little, a little further away than, than uh, but God has a plan, yeah. and our plan A is usually not his plan A, so, uh, but he does have a plan that works that plan out. So for just a second, because I'm, I'm going to kind of, I was actually going to say that you weren't here today, but I was going to talk about you because <laughs> no, this is a good thing. Sure, sure. That's what I'm doing. Uh, that's what I'm asking myself. But, um, what am I doing here? No, so we're going to be talking about farming today. Okay, so, uh, so what's going on? What is something that God has passioned you with? Something that you're doing? Something we could get involved with, just in a nutshell, we'll, we'll unfold this as the days go on, but I just wanted to mention this this morning when we're talking about thinking like a farmer. Um, we started an organic farm in Mango, um, and we started everything from seed, and, and that's what we do. Okay. So we grow a lot of crops. So how can we get involved with something like that? What, what would, I'm like, okay, other people have gardens as well. Um, well, we have a work for food program. You can come volunteer and get some food for you or somebody else. Uh, so we have that. If you're interested, you can talk to us about that. Um, or you can just come volunteering out at the farm. Okay. Spend some time with some pigs and chickens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's exciting, and I know um, and I know that we have this food bank here. But you said you know, <coughs> a group of people come and work for an hour, and that all collects together yeah. and then we can have enough hours to say hey we just we just kind of helped in this way and so now we have this food and we want to give it to the people around us. Absolutely. So are you saying that you're so our CSA program we do CSA shares uh, we distribute food uh, weekly or bi-weekly um, but 
anybody can register for a CSA uh, through the Work for Food program. So if there was somebody that you knew um, that couldn't afford food, uh, we do have protein uh, in our CSA shares as well. Um, you can work 40 hours as a group. Uh, so if two people did 20 hours together, it would pay for a CSA for somebody for their household for the whole season. Um, yeah. No, that's awesome. I'll let you guys sit down. Thank you so much. So, and congratulations again, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know this was something that none of us had planned to do this morning, so um, thank you for your flexibility on that. But sometimes God takes over. He's like, you got to get over there and share some of this stuff with what's going on. So, so uh, let me rapidly go through my notes here and uh, say thank you again for being here this morning. We have been looking at the fruit of the Spirit. We've been looking at the fruit of the Spirit. And keep in mind that the fruit of the Spirit is something that God develops within us over time. It's a process. And it's something that we can't do on our own. Jesus said the only way that you're going to be able to produce any kind of this fruit that we're talking about, that Paul talks about in Galatians chapter 5, is by abiding in Him, staying connected with Jesus in a personal way that allows Him to work in your life and that you can process with Him, right? He doesn't just say that, that I abide in you, but He says you abide in me, right? So it's a two-way, it's a, it's a connection, it's a relationship that we have with Him and it's through that process and through His power and direction of His Spirit that inspires us to go beyond ourselves and to express this fruit to the lives, the hearts and lives of people around us. That's why it isn't called just fruit. It's called fruit of the Spirit, because it's the Holy Spirit that enables us to do this. And so far we've talked about love and joy and peace, and today we're going to be talking about forbearance, or what I grew up saying, uh, knowing is patience. Patience is probably something that we'll refer to this morning. And so I invite you to turn to uh, James chapter 5. James chapter 5, where you can look on the screen. And uh, listen, I'm just going to say that patience is long and boring, right? Taking, getting, having patience is, is a long process for things oftentimes, and that's just the way it is. And so I'm not going to try to be long and boring, but you might have to be patient with me today uh, as we unfold this. <laughs> James chapter 5, verse 7 says this. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crops. Um, patiently waiting for the autumn and the spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. I think a lot of times we get involved with this, this idea of when, then, this this idea of when then, like you remember, when when I get my driver's license, or when I get to college, or when I graduate from college, when I get a job, when I get a promotion, when I get married, when we have a family, when I retire, then life is going to be good. And um, <clears throat> listen, if, if we're going to, uh, if our tomorrows are going to be successful, we need to make sure that each and every moment of every day counts for something right here and right now in these moments that we have to build for what's next. But, but if we're always thinking about what's next, we can't really be in the here and now. But that takes patience. That takes patience. And, and we see throughout Scripture, that Scripture tells us to be patient, right? Where it says, be still and know that I am God. Or to wait upon the Lord while He is near. It's easy uh, to let our minds get the best of us when we're trying to wait. And we just want to, just come on, let's do it. Let's take it so long. You stand in front of the microwave, it's like, 20 seconds? Are you kidding me? It's going to take forever to get this cooked. Uh, is sometimes how I feel. But um, let me offer this perspective to you. When we have to zoom out when God is trying to develop patience within us. We have to zoom out. We have to look at the bigger picture. And when we're discouraged and we're frustrated, chances are we've been zooming in on something 
and we're getting nitpicky about things and it gives them negative emotions. And negative emotions can drive us, drive us downward. And uh, that is a bad combination, but I get it, right? When somebody ticks us off and we think about all of those things that, that they shouldn't have done, that they deserve, and what I deserve, and that shouldn't have happened to me, and we're starting to think about some things that would probably wind us up in jail if we acted up on those things. Uh, just what we're, we're thinking, we're zooming in instead of zooming out, and uh, we lose all perspective. But I know, I know what it's like in those difficult times when we break up with somebody, that's all we can think about. Or, or even if something is practical, when we're driving down the road and somebody cuts in front of us or slams on their brake and we're like, what? And we want to we wanna express our thoughts and words, mm. uh, perhaps, behind the steering wheel in those moments and go, you, mm. right, and you're just going, hey, come on, let's zoom out. Let's get the bigger picture. I'm, I'm safe. I wasn't hit. I'm not hurt. We're going to get there. God is in control. Keep my eyes on Jesus. And uh, be patient. Be patient. Patience is when we zoom out and we remember the promises of God. Patience is when we zoom out and remember that there is an eternal future in front of me. Patience is when we zoom out and say, my, my most important thing here is to stay in step with the Holy Spirit as He's leading us. But we'll never be able to see those things in the midst of our frustration if we don't zoom out. Um, you've heard this before and I'll say it again. It isn't about the destination, it's about in the journey, enjoying the journey. And... Uh, that's where patience comes into play. And I know that oftentimes when God puts a dream within us, it usually takes longer to come to fruition than we'd like it to. It, it's a harder thing to have happen than we would like it to. But we have a choice. We can choose to be patient and let God drive this thing and let Him bring it to fruition. Or we can try to jump start it and get all aggravated about that. But we need to enjoy the journey that helps us and and as parents we know what it's like to enjoy the journey right I mean babies are cute they are cute but you still have to change their diaper so there's that as well and did you know by the way that diaper spelled backwards is repaid so there might be something in that word that don't think about it too long but anyway so as we're thinking about those cute little babies and changing their diapers we're thinking oh I can't wait until this part of their life or that part of their life like so what's after the the diaper changing time is, is the potty training time and then you look ahead and you get the toddler time and you got the elementary school age and and you got puberty and you've got teenage years and we got to enjoy every age of every stage of their lives by the way, I think that God gives us dreams. And when he gives us those dreams, he's less concerned about us actually accomplishing the dream. And he's more concerned about who we become in the process. So we need to be patient enough. We need to slow down enough that we can learn some lessons along the way and cultivate his character in the process. See, everything that we're doing now, God is preparing for us and what he wants us to do next. Whether that's next year or five years from now or 10 or 20 or 30 years from now. What we're doing now in the kingdom of God is what God is preparing for us and what we want, what he wants us to do next. And if, if you don't believe me, ask anybody that's been walking with the Lord for decades upon decades, and they'll tell you, yes, God was faithful here, and this door opened, and this this thing happened, and I wasn't expecting it, and it was definitely a God thing, and it was something that I stepped out of faith with, but, but he helped me to, to enlarge my territory, and uh, those things happened. Let's move on. James writes these words. He says, see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crops, patiently waiting for the autumn and the spring rains. I read something a couple of weeks ago that said, if you live in a city that's populated with more than a million people, 
a pause in the day is going to seem twice as long as it does if you live in a small town. And I think about the country in which we live, and, and we're driven at the speed of light. Things happen so quickly, and I think because of that, we often want God to respond just as quickly at the speed of light. But in the kingdom of God, it's, it's not about the speed of light. It's more of a speed of a seed that gets planted, and that takes time to, to develop, to root, and to grow, and to blossom, to bear fruit. There was a Russian comedian that immigrated to, to America, and a reporter asked him, he said, so, how do you like America? He said, oh, America, America, I love America. I love going to the grocery store, and you can walk down one aisle and see powdered milk. Just add water, and you get milk. And he said, and I walked down another aisle, and it says, powdered orange juice, just add water, and you get orange juice. And then I walked down another aisle, and it says, baby powder. I mean, where else can you go and get milk and orange juice and a baby just by adding water with, with, with uh, powder? You know, but that's sometimes the uh, instant gratification that we're looking for. And we want everything to happen yesterday. But James says you've got to think like a farmer. James says, see how the farmer waits for the land to yield valuable crop. Let's look at that word yield a little bit, because it isn't just an agricultural term, but it's also a term in the financial world, world as well. Uh, and it means that we uh, have a return that we get on our investment. It's a financial term. In the financial realm, we want to have a high yield, and we want to get, have a good return on our investment. And some people are great at this, and they invest in, in quality things, and they leave it set there for a while, they're patient, and they they get some real high yield off there. But sometimes people want this fast money. You've, you've seen the, the deal or no deal game show where they have a suitcase and they think I'm holding on to a million dollars. And, and oftentimes what happens, they either, they either jump the gun or they hold on to this thing so long that they end up just walking away with a few dollars. And it's a little greedy. And greed is financial impatience. And all too often, we want to have a yield, but we don't want to be the farmer. What does a farmer do? It, it plants seed, it waters, it patiently waits, and then it's dependent also on the rains for both the spring and, and for the autumn. And over time, the farmer gets what we call compound interest. And compound interest isn't just the interest that we earn on the principal, but it's the interest that we earn earlier over time. Let me give you an example of this. If your grandparents had invested in Coca-Cola back in 1919 for about $40, by the year 2000, if they had reinvested those um, investments or those shares that would have multiplied over the years, they would have been given a check for $7 million. If your great-great-grandparents had invested in Coca-Cola, in the original Coca-Cola series. It's about $100, and I know back then that's a lot of money, but if they had done that today, it would be worth $7.34 billion just by what it set there all these years. Wise investments, that's the power of compound interest, and that's the power of patience. I think oftentimes we want what our parents spent 40 years <laughs> attaining, we want it in just a couple of years, that doesn't happen very often. That doesn't, it's not the natural thing that happens. Compound interest isn't just a financial thing, but in the kingdom of God, biblical patience is also compound interest when it comes to relationships, when it comes to spiritual matters. For example, I don't pray the way that I used to pray 10, 20 years ago. Why? Because I've seen God, faithfulness, and, and answering prayer all those many years. It may not have been the way I wanted it to, but as I see how God has answered prayer in the way that God has answered prayer versus the way that I thought he should have, it just reminds me that God is God and I am not. That God has the plan and I need to follow that plan. I don't read the word of God the same way. It's something that has taken root within me and it's, it's promises that I stand on because, I, again, I see God's faithfulness to be pro proven faithful as I stand on the promises of God. 
there are compound interests in all of this, this fruit. The love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the gentleness, the faithfulness, and the self-control. But it's all embedded in patience. We have to be patient for the fruit to ripen. We have to be patient for God to do what only God can do through our lives. Through the lives of our children and our grandchildren that we're pulling our hair out. I've been doing that, you can tell. That <laughs> um, we do that, but we have to say, God, I'm trusting you. I need to be patient and let you do what you're going to do. There's a verse in the Bible that talks about compound interest. Jesus was with a, a crowd of people by, by the lake, by some water, and here's what it records out of Matthew chapter 13. It says this, Then Jesus told them, many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to see his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell along a rocky place where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was so shallow, but when the sun came out, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had, not, they had no root. And then other seed fell among thorn, which grew up and choked out the plant. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it was produced, producing a crop of 160 and 30 times what was sown. Can you imagine starting out with a certain amount of love, then having it expand 60 times the amount of love that you originally had? Sometimes that happens in those relationships. The love that parents have for a child, I could never have imagined that I would love someone so much or to, to have an expression of joy that's a hundred times more than you had thought that you would have ever experienced joy, maybe because of some of the, the things that you grew up as a child, and some of the, the places you thought, I'm never going to get out of this mess, but God allows you to, and it compounds your joy. Here's the thing, I can't promise that those things are going to happen like that overnight, or within a day, or a week, or a year, but I can promise you that if you keep abiding in Christ, if you keep in step with the Holy Spirit day by day, the compound interest is going to take effect in your life and mine. Listen, we have a culture that celebrates the, the 15 minutes of fame, but in the kingdom of God, they celebrate lifelong faithfulness, people that have long obedience in the same direction doing the right thing for a long, long period of time. And I know developing patience and perseverance isn't the most glamorous part of following of Jesus Christ and being a Christian, but it's something that we need to celebrate and it's something that we need to cultivate. So uh, we need to think like a farmer and uh, if we're going to bear the fruit that God wants us to bear. And this is what I was going to talk about back in Leanne, but we've already done that. We're here and they shared that with us. So I'm, I'm serious. I'm going to find myself in Mayville. I'm going to pull up my sleeves and I'm going to pull some weeds or whatever we're doing over there. And I'm going to be a part of that because I think that's great. And this is, it's something that gets our hands in the earth and reminds us that God is faithful to, to bring forth fruit and plants and crops and allows us to eat and provides for us and blesses us. Mm -hmm. So how do we get a high yield spiritually? We get a high yield spiritually by yielding to God. And that's the, the best way that we can do that. And the more that we yield to God, the more God is revealed and there's less of us. The more that we experience His blessing, the more that we express the fruit of God. And that's my prayer for each and every one of us. Part of abiding in Christ and bearing the fruit that He wants us to bear is pacing ourselves. If we're going to finish well, if we're going to be effective at the end of life, it's important for us to slow down long enough and pace ourselves so that we can hear from God and what He's calling us to do and what He wants to accomplish through us. God wants to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. Can we slow down long enough to ask God? Can we slow down long enough to imagine what He wants to do in that realm? And He wants to do it through your life and mine. But we will never be able to attain that and understand it or even, even put it on our radar if we don't zoom out and let God be God. 
We need to look at what we're doing now and for the next generation. Patience also allows us to think in longer timelines and longer time frames. Are we thinking about the third and the fourth generation down the road? Because see, our future isn't just for us. The future is for everybody that comes after us as well. And God has put people in our lives that are young and younger that are looking to us to be the light and hope and to help them connect with God and to understand the truth of what lies ahead for them as well. Let me close with this illustration and this story. If you've ever gone to the University of Chicago, you won't go very far without running into the name of Amos uh, Alonzo Stagg. Amos Alonzo Stagg, he was a football coach. He died in 1965 at the age of 102. And there are buildings all across America, coliseum stadiums that are that have his nameplate on their building, Amos Alonzo Stack. And he, for four decades, was the coach for the University of Chicago Maroons. And he has still an influence there today, but he, uh, he led the Maroons to two national titles in 1905 and 1913. He practically invented the game of football as we know it. If you care to know, he invented the huddle, he invented the Statue of Liberty play, he invented the onside kick, the T formation, the forward pass, and dozens and dozens more. Not only with football, but with basketball and other sports as well. But here's the point. When he accepted his invitation to be the coach at this university, here's what he wrote to the president of the university as he accepted this position. He said, after much thought and prayer, I decided that my life can best be used for my master's service in the position that you have offered to me. Amos Alonzo Stagg coached until he was 98 years old. But that's not his legacy. Here's his legacy. A reporter came up to him after a big game, after a big win, and he just wanted to congratulate him. And he said, hey, congratulations, Mr. And Mr. Stagg has said, thank you. But here's what he said back to the reporter. He said, I won't know how good of a job I had done for another 20 years. Because that's when I'll be able to see how these boys turned out. You know, what kind of a mindset do we have? We get so fixated on the here and now that we don't think about the future and what impact that's going to have, what outcome that could have. What are we doing today about what is going to happen 20 years from now? The best thing we could do today, if we haven't already done that, to have the impact that it could have for 20 years from now, is to put our faith and life in the hands of Jesus. Are we living that way? Are we setting the next generation up for a win? I say we can do it. Let's enjoy the journey. Let's do it by zooming out. Let's do it by focusing on the big picture. Let's do it by planting and watering and cultivating and trusting that God's going to bring the rain in the spring and He's going to bring the rain in the autumn so that we can have a high yield, so that we can experience compound interest. And if we keep doing what God is calling us to do, if we keep in step with what God is showing us and revealing to us and we respond to those things, his purposes will prevail, and he will do immeasurably more than all we can ever ask or imagine according to the power, his power, that is at work within us, so that we can bear much fruit and express that to others. Would you stand with me, please, as we close the morning? God, these are your words. And so I'm always excited to share those because... These are your promises. This is your truth. And so help us to receive these words today. Help us to, to continue to chew on those things and to, to mull them over in our heart and stir within our soul so that your spirit can, can help to, to solidify those for our lives as individuals, 
and what you're calling us to do, what you're calling me to do, and the next person to do right here, right now. That we would keep our eyes on you, that we would do the next right thing that you're calling us to do, and then the next right thing, and then the next right thing. And that we're doing it not just for what's happening around us here and now, the circumstances and the feelings and all those things that go with what we're experiencing in this moment, but we're doing it for what lies ahead. Not only for our lives and what's going to happen in the next three to five, ten years, but we're doing it for the lives of generations to come. God, you've already proven that this congregation is interested in what lies ahead. We just put a whole new wing on the north part of our building for generations that will, will have an impact on the lives of not only people that come to this church, but people already that are having an impact on the lives of the people in our community. They have no other place to go but they're freely able to come here and to have their activity and to ask questions and to engage in conversation and to experience a love that goes beyond themselves. So God, I pray that whatever you're calling us to do, whatever you put in our heart to do, help us to be patient enough to allow you to accomplish it through us. Thank you, God, that you have a plan and that you haven't brought us to this place just to leave us. If you have something more, you have something that's going to drive us even further and is going to continue to challenge us, but it's also going to encourage us and is going to help us to see that this goes beyond ourselves and is going to allow you to be continue to be God and we be reminded that we can't do it without remaining faithful to you and we can't do it alone and we have to do it together. So God, all of these things, all these pieces, we pray that you would continue to bring them together so that we can experience them for your honor and for your glory and for our opportunity to become more like you in the process and along with that, that other people would see the hope and the light of Jesus Christ. We pray all of these things, yes, Sally, in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today. And hang in there, stay well and healthy, and we'll see you shortly.